If you don't live under a rock, you have probably seen something like this in the past few weeks. The boys has gone woke. Only libtards could enjoy that show now because it's gone woke. So obvious spoiler warning for the boys. If you have not seen it, I'm going to be looking at things from every season in this video. So go watch it. It's a great show. Now, if you actually have been watching the boys and like paying attention to it at all, you would know that this makes no sense. The boys has always been a left leaning show that discusses political things. in season one, Homelander literally planted a super terrorist so that he could fearmonger his way into the United States military. Guys, I am so upset that the boys got woke in season four. I hate it when shows decide to get political because commenting on the war on terror is in no way political, as we all know. They've been making fun of LGBTQAI plus in the the show in season two, they've been making fun of Queen Maeve's pride lasagna. If you watched the Queen Maeve's pride lasagna stuff and thought that they were making fun of pride as a movement and not making fun of mega corporations co-opting for profit, then you have misunderstood the show. Uh, if you are not subscribed, please do subscribe to me. Also, it would help me out a ton. I'm putting a lot of work into my YouTube and would appreciate the support. Thank you so much. This is a commentary on how corporations used Pride as a movement for profit. Go into your local Target last month for Pride Month and the section would have been way smaller than it was even as far back as 2018. With people in positions of power fearmongering the existence of trans people from some of the biggest influencers and streamers nowadays being openly bigoted, homophobic, and or racist, and just the general public kind of shift away from pride being this huge massive thing, a lot of stores have started to dial back. That's because pride at Target was not Target making a political statement. It was Target co-opting a movement for financial gain. Nothing more, nothing less. Even in text, Maeve is bisexual, not a lesbian. And even though she publicly dated Homelander, Vought would rather go against their established canon and make Maeve lie about her identity because saying that she's a lesbian is more profitable than saying that she's bisexual. Vought was not supportive of Maeve's sexuality at any point. They only cared about it once they realized that they could squeeze a bunch of money out of it. Just like how Target squeezed a bunch of money out of its pride displays and then dialed them back the instant they were starting to not turn a massive profit. Target put out a statement saying that the reason they reduced the display for pride is because people were coming in and destroying them, so it was for the safety of their employees. Uh, I thought this was America where we do not give in to the demands of terrorists. Isn't that our whole thing? So I don't know. It sounds to me like if people walk into your store and start destroying shit, you shouldn't give them what they want? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. But you're kind of rewarding the destruction, right? Uh, I don't know. That's not the point of the video. I don't know. Target, you do you. Vought is an evil corporation. That was the target of the joke, not pride. They made Frenchie gay now. Y'all, you don't need to make everybody gay. Frenchie was already confirmed to have been in a thruple as far back as season two with a woman and another man. And I feel like the only way that you could misinterpret that is if like you thought that they were both fucking each other and like knew about it. Like Frenchie was having sex with the woman and the man. Like I, did you like they could not have spelled it out any further unless they actually showed him like banging the dude. Like you, like, you have to be intentionally dense to think that's not what they were saying. He was already gay. I don't have anything else to say about this. Like, he just, he was already gay. Okay, 
Well, even if Frenchie was already gay, he was supposed to end up with Kimiko. They've been setting that done up for three seasons. I feel like this just comes from like a very fundamental misunderstanding of Kimiko and Frenchie's relationship because Frenchie is interested in Kimiko early on because he's projecting his sexuality and trauma and past all onto her and thinks that by healing her, he can heal himself. Kimiko is similar to Frenchie in the way that they were kind of forced slash groomed into this life of harming people and that's not really something they ever wanted to do this is very on the nose Frenchie says this to Kimiko like way back in season one saying that like I can tell that you're gentle I can tell you're not a killer I see that you just want to go home and everyone else is disagreeing and the reason that Frenchie is so stubbornly set on redeeming Kimiko is because he sees himself in her he's projecting and obviously that's unhealthy. So when he tries to kiss her in season two, they both realize that it was wrong and they kind of come to the conclusion that they're more than that, they're family, because they finally seen past that projected trauma and seen each other as the true persons that they are. Now, the reason that I don't think Colin is working is not because it's Frenchie being gay. I think it's just because we're kind of retreading that ground. Like we saw him do this with Kimiko and like, yeah, he wasn't having sex with Kimiko, but it's essentially the same character arc, relationship arc, whatever, that he had with Kimiko, but he's doing it with Colin, which is why I have not been that interested in it, because it's like, we saw you overcome this, dude. Like, let's, you know, they're kind of like flanderizing Frenchie by like having him just repeat this, this trauma. Uh, that being said, I don't think it's impossible that with, you know, half of the season left and another season they could like write it to where they end up together. So I don't think that's like entirely impossible, but I just think it's interesting that like you could watch what we've seen so far and be like, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're meant to be together. They're in love with each other because like that's really obviously like not what they were saying. And if you disagree with this take, if you think that I'm misunderstanding the character, they literally say this, like they say this, it's not even like, subtext like Frenchie goes to Sherry and she's like you're projecting onto Kimiko like it's in text bro it's like not a secret you thought a kiss would make her feel better or you feel better she was in pain I wanted to help you always want to help so <sighs> you think that by saving her you can make amends for all the people you hurt the showrunner slash creator of the show even tweeted the scene of Kamiko saying that they feel like family now to dissuade the shipping. I really don't like it when people try to invalidate certain criticisms of art or certain views on art. I think that art is in the eyes of everyone who views it and everyone is entitled to kind of process what they're seeing as they want based on their experiences. Um, you know, same with the thing of like why we don't like AI, you know? It's not a human experience being translated. The thing with the boys is that it is so on the nose and so in text that you have to just not be paying attention or being intentionally dense to not understand that this is a left-leaning show. And I don't know. It's just interesting to me. And especially with the backlash against Starlight actress Arian Moriarty's plastic surgery and Eric Kripke again having to come out and defend her from the hate, saying that, I, you know, don't watch my show if you're going to make fun of the actress playing Starlight. And it's like hard to be on the boys' social media right now because there are so many like funny memes, like the one that's like, Butcher, oi, oi, oi. Omelander stole me bloody son. And then it's like MM's shirt and it's like a ridiculous t-shirt, you know? But then it'll be like the same meme format, but it'll be like Starlight's face and just like a picture of a snowman. Also, side note, the actress who plays the uh, female version of Jordan Lee in Gen V uh, follows this account that posted this meme about Starlight, which is pretty funny. Um, 
I don't think, you know, she saw this meme or that's why she's following it, but I just noticed that and I was like, huh, that, that's interesting. But yeah, this show is not a show for Republicans. It's never made fun of both sides. It's not centrist. Uh, even then, like the show, the showrunner Eric Kripke again came out and said that like, if you look up to Homelander, like you're just looking at it wrong and strongly implied that he based a Homelander somewhat off of a former United States president. Um, so yeah, I just, again, like, you know, take art however you want to take it. But I think if the way that you have to take art relies on completely ignoring things that are said in text, then you're kind of losing the plot a little bit and media literacy is going down the drain. There's this very old tweet that I remember that said like, English teachers be like, the curtains are blue because they represented depression or something. And then it's like, no, the curtains were just blue. And I think that's what is happening to media literacy in general. Like that tweet did damage, bro. Because like, no, maybe the author did intend to communicate something by specifying what color the curtains were, you know? Writing a book, everything that you write matters. And if you choose to communicate a color, then there might be a reason, you know? Like, if the color of the curtains didn't matter, it, they might have just said, like, the curtains, not the blue curtains, you know? And especially with filmmaking, uh, you know, TV and movies, visual language is even stronger. And everything that you put into the text or the background, or the dialogue, it all matters, right? And I think if you're just choosing to ignore certain parts of the script or certain parts of the visual communication of something, then your criticism of media is just not as, as informed as it should be to properly be criticizing media. It's one thing to be like, oh, The Boys was boring me, so I didn't watch it, you know? But when you're like, oh, they shouldn't have done this, but it's like they already did that, dude, in the seasons that you're claiming to like, uh, then you're just not paying attention to the show and your criticism isn't really criticism. It's just complaining and ignoring the text of what you're consuming. And I don't think that's good for anyone. You do not have to watch The Boys. You just don't. You know, log off of Amazon Prime, go take a walk, watch Rick and Morty on Hulu, you know, do something else. Um, it'll all work out. It'll all be okay. And the show doing things isn't really going to affect your everyday life. So don't worry. You don't have to be upset about it anymore. I hope that I've freed you from the shackles of your anger. Um, so yeah. In London Thor, uh, you know, if you watch this, I'm free on Friday night. So, and also I'd love to cameo in Gen V. So just hit me up. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Make sure to like and subscribe. You can see how messy my car is in the reflection of my sunglasses. So I'm going to take those off. Hey, like and subscribe. This has been a Hippo Overwatch production.